Hey music lovers, thanks so much for uh, dropping by. Welcome to the channel. Thought I would do a concert review for you. Last weekend I got a chance to go see Blue Oyster Cult. They did a gig uh, at this place uh, in Rocky Mount, Virginia, which is this uh, real small town in Southeast Virginia. Uh, this place called the Harvester Performance Center and um, it's a great venue. I was there once before. I was there about a year ago to see Boss Skaggs. Um, with my father because he's a real big fan. It was kind of like a father-son night. That was really cool. But I went back to the Harvester and uh, Harvester Center is a really interesting place because uh, like I said, it's a real small town and they got this awesome venue and they bring in these, you know, not huge acts, but they bring in, you know, acts that um, you'd never expect to be hitting a small little town like Rocky Mount. But uh, the Harvester was a community-driven venue. The community wanted a venue. And so they got grants for the city. They, they got all kinds of grants to make this happen. They took this uh, place that was a, a store that used to sell tools and they converted it into this great venue, nice stage, lights. It's just a really cozy place. And um, the place was sold out. People were there in droves to see Blue Oyster Cult. I wish I took a picture of the, the line that was like around the block. Um, but uh, it was a really great show. You know, every time I've tried to go see Blue Oyster Cult, something got in the way. I, you know, uh, whether I was at a show, <laughs> there are times where I went to the show and actually couldn't see the show. It was about 20 years ago, actually, was the last time I actually went to a BOC show. I was with my girlfriend at that time and one of my best friends. Neither of them could give a shit about Blue Oyster Cult, right? And it's a festival. There's lots of other things going on. I wound up getting pulled into other directions. I never got to really enjoy the show. And um, one time I actually had tickets to go see them. Um, but for some reason, something came up and I wasn't able to go. So finally, I was able to go. Uh, I made sure I got third row seats. You know, and uh, I just was there for the whole thing. It was really great. And um, if you get a chance to go see Blue Oyster Cult, go see them. You want a great night out to go see a really good, solid rock band, then go check out Blue Oyster Cult. They're probably coming to your town at some point. These guys are road warriors. I mean, they play live. They've been playing live for decades. Well-oiled machine. Really great band. Um the guitar playing is great. Uh, even if you don't know the songs, you'll probably still get into it. You know, of course, only two of the guys are original, but that's okay. They still put on a really great show. You know, Eric Bloom on vocals uh, and guitar. You got Buck Dharma, who, of course, is the voice of like Don't Fear the Reaper and Burning For You. He's on guitar, too. Uh, he's, in my opinion one of the best living guitar players that's out there. You can say what you want about Jeff Beck, say what you want about Eric Clapton and some of these guys. And yeah, they each have their own styles and everything, but I equally love Buck Dharma. He's just got a great tone, uh, great solos, great riffs. Uh, always a pleasure to uh, you know hear him sing and to watch him play. And um, the band also features uh, Richie Castellano on guitar, which I did a whole video about him and his project called Band Geek. I remember I was, um, I had come across this cover of Close to the Edge by Yes that just blew me away. And um, that was a project that Richie is a part of. Uh, him and his wife and a bunch of their friends, really, really talented. They did this amazing cover of Close to the Edge. You've got to check it out. I'll put a link up to Band Geek. That's what they call it. And, um, Richie is one of these guys that can play every instrument. He's done like, uh, you know, like Bohemian Rhapsody by himself, the Abbey Road medley by himself, plays all the instruments, sings all the vocals. He's one of these, you know, like studio nerd types, you know, and I mean that in a great way. You know, he's just really into the production and he can play every instrument. And uh, he's the secret weapon in Blue Oyster Cult. You know, when he wasn't playing the guitar, he was doing the keyboards and um, he was awesome to watch, too. Had really great solos, uh, really good compliment to Buck Dharma, for sure. And really, I think Richie helps to elevate BOC in this current state. Uh, you've also got um, Jules Radino on drums. He's been with them uh, since about 2004, as has Richie. Uh, and then you've got uh, Denny Miranda on bass. And uh, he's been with them kind of on and off since the mid-90s. And so overall, 
you know, like I said, these guys are road warriors and they're very well rehearsed, very tight band. Uh, I'm just going to run through the set list here. Um, they kick off the show with this great track from the second album, um, Tyranny and Mutation. The song was called uh, The Red and the Black. That's a really cool tune. Then they go into Before the Kiss, a red cap, which is uh, from their first album. After they do this song, uh, Eric Bloom tells a story about how they ran into George Carlin. Now, of course, George Carlin is the late, great comedian. And uh, saying that he's a comedian, I think, kind of sells him short. You know, I, uh, I'm a huge fan of George Carlin, always have been. Uh, he was uh, somebody that I used to really love, not just because he made me laugh, but he made me think the way that he saw the world and everything. I mean, I love, love Carlin and uh, was really sad when he passed away. I mean, uh, his death hit me like as hard as as Freddie Mercury from Queen, you know, it was like one of those, like I heard it and I was like, you know, and Chris Squire from Yes, like I heard it and I was like depressed the whole day because uh, he meant so much to me. And uh, so Eric Bloom tells this story about how the band ran into George Carlin. They were at an airport uh, at a car rental place and um, George Carlin was there and he was like, you guys look like you're in a rock band. And uh, Eric Bloom was like, yeah, well, we are. And he was like, well, who, who are you? And uh, Eric was like, we're Blue Oyster Cult. And so George Carlin pulls this cassette out of his, out of his bag and it's their uh, first album, the one that uh, has Before the Kiss a red cap on it. So that was Eric's story about how they ran into George and he just, you know, happened to be a fan. Uh, so that, that was really cool. Um, after that, they do this uh, great, great song from the Spectres album called uh, Golden Age of Leather. And uh, if you've never heard this song, this is like an underrated song from the 70s. To me, it's just as good as Don't Fear the Reaper or anything else that they've ever done. Um, the Golden Age of Leather has like, I don't know, three or four different movements that it kind of goes through. Great guitar work. It's just a really cool song. As a matter of fact, I got a playlist that I'm going to throw down below. Uh, some really cool songs of theirs uh, from the 70s. I've already done one uh, for the uh, 80s and 90s. Even did a whole video about uh, some of the most underrated uh, songs that BOC did uh, during the 80s and 90s. And I'm going to do another one uh, for the 70s. I'll put that down below. Uh, then after that, they do, of course, their 80s hit, Burning For You, that, of course, uh, sung by Buck Dharma. Great guitar work. Always did love that one. Then they do uh, ME262, which is from the Secret Treaties album. Then they go into a song called Shooting Shark, which I absolutely love. That's from uh, the Revolution by Night album. Uh, this is one of the songs that I featured in my video uh, about some of the most underrated songs of BOCs from the 80s. And uh, before they did this one, Buck Dharma mentioned, as I did in my video, that the uh, original bass player on this song was Randy Jackson. You may recall him from uh, American Idol. He was one of the judges. And he was also a member of Journey briefly when they went through their Raised on Radio phase. And they got rid of Ross Valerie and Steve Smith. And so it was really cool that he brought that part up. I didn't expect him to even mention that. Um, then after that, they do this great song called The Vigil from the Mirrors album. Uh, and then after that, they do a song called ETI, which uh, I was really happy to see this one. I've always loved this song. Uh, it's called Extraterrestrial Intelligence, and it's from the uh, Agents of Fortune album, the same one that's got Don't Fear the Reaper. And... Uh, this is a good example of a BOC song that I wasn't really crazy about the album version once I heard the live version on Some Enchanted Evening. I think that the live version really brings this song to life. Always did like it more live than the album. Um, but great to see that. After that, they do Buck's Boogie. And uh, Buck's Boogie is basically Buck Dharma's song to just kind of, you know, blow around on the guitar. Really good uh, instrumental for him to just do a lot of solos and it's a really, really fun song. After that, they do a song called Then Came the Last Days of May, which is a really cool song. Uh, and then after that, they do uh, a really, uh, I was really shocked to see this song, Tattoo Vampire from the uh, Agents of Fortune album, the same one with Don't Fear the Reaper, again. Um, it's a short song, but it's a rockin' song, a lot of fun, and uh, that was really, really cool to see. And then after that, they do Godzilla. Of course, you gotta do that one. That's always a fun song, great song, live. 
Uh, and then after that, they do Don't Fear the Reaper, which, of course, everybody knows and everybody has heard a thousand times. And yes, it had a lot of cowbell. Uh, this is the song that uh, they built that whole Saturday Night Live skit around, you know, with, uh, you know, I need more cowbell. I got a fever and I need more cowbell. You know, the, the band that was featured in that skit was B.O.C., and before they did this song, Buck Dharma dedicated it to Marty Ballin, uh, who had just passed away this week. Of course, Marty Ballin was in uh, the Jefferson Airplane. I always did love Marty, loved the songs that he did with Jefferson Airplane. You know, he was the one that did like Miracles and Runaway. Those were two pretty big hits for him. And uh, he had a great solo song called Hearts that I always liked. And I always saw a similarity between Marty Ballin and Buck Dharma in terms of their vocals. Both have very smooth vocals. Like I could almost hear Marty Ballin singing some of the Buck Dharma stuff, you know. Um, so anyway, after that, that, that's how they close the show before they come back for the encore. And for the encore, they did three songs. They did uh, a couple of songs uh, from their second album. They do uh, OD'd on Life Itself. And then they do Hot Rails from Hell, which uh, featured uh, Richie Castellano on vocals. Uh, and then after that, they close it out with Cities on Flame with Rock and Roll, which is a great classic from their first album, which uh, is a, kind of like a classic rock staple. So uh, overall, it was a very entertaining, high energy, rockin' show, lots of great guitar playing. If it wasn't Buck Dharma, then it was Richie Castellano just putting down some awesome solos. Um, if you're a fan of BOC, you gotta go check them out. Like I said, these guys, this is what they do. They play live. They haven't put a new album out in a long, long time uh, because they're really uh, a live band. You gotta go see them live. So check out their tour schedule for when they're coming around by you. And um, like I said, I got a link below to, uh, you know, maybe clue you in on some great songs from the 70s that um, are a bit underrated that you might not have heard. You know, a lot of people, they've heard of Don't Fear the Reaper and they've heard of Godzilla and Burning For You. But there's so many other really cool songs that BOC's done. Uh, the only song that I, well, there's probably a few songs that I wish that they would have done, but one of the songs that I wish that they had done from the 70s is this tune called I Love the Night, which I'll put a link to down below. Always did like that one, and that's another one. Got to see it live. It sounds so much better. But what are your favorite BOC songs? Have you seen them recently? Are you going to go see them? Let me know. Be sure to comment below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Hit that uh, subscribe button too, all right? And I will uh, see you soon in another video. Thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night to you all. Get home safe. Good night.